guys, what's up? Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm joined by a special guest for a very special video about a show that you guys have been asking me to do for like decades. Like before the show was even released, you guys were asking me. Today I am joined by none other than Nicole Raffi to talk about yellow jackets. I'm so hyped. This is like one of my favorite shows of all time. So I'm like, and like, you're one of my favorite YouTubers of all time. So how lucky am I? I am the lucky one because not only have so many people requested yellow jackets, I found like a yellow jackets expert. Nicole was like all about yellow jackets. And I was like, oh, oh, this is excellent. Like I just found I found the jackpot for this video. I needed an expert. I can't like something a little bit or normally, like I can't like something a healthy amount. I have to like go full in and like show every single person in my life, including my mother, which like some of these scenes, I don't wish that my mother had seen, but like she has and she loved it. Yellow Jackets took over my entire life last year. When season three comes around, like just expect me to like be back into my fully Yellow Jackets phase. Um, and also Twitter has been like eating us up like, chewing us a new one for not posting this video sooner. The show is about a soccer team that ends up getting into a plane crash, stranded in the woods, and trying to fend for their lives while some other forces of nature have some effects on them, I would like to say. And it jumps between timelines of the survivors and the events of the crash and them surviving in the woods and going along with the adult timeline of the effects that had that the plane crash and surviving in the woods had on them it's very convoluted story very lost-esque i just launched my very first patreon and why i'm launching it on this video is because i'm actually uploading an extended version of this video on my patreon right now me and nicole watch some clips of yellow jackets and that is only available on patreon so if you guys want to see the extended version of this video on patreon make sure you guys go subscribe to my patreon patreon will be getting early access to all my main channel videos so if you're subscribed to my patreon i actually uploaded this video at the very beginning of the day but for main channel videos i'll be uploading them 48 hours before the main channel video releases with extended versions so i'm going to be cutting a lot of stuff out for my main channel due to copyright reasons and so on patreon you're going to be able to see a lot more of my videos especially commentaries that i can't upload the full versions on here on youtube due to copyright right reason so on patreon you're gonna get the extended versions a lot more content a lot more commentary a lot more reactions and you will get early access to them and on top of that if that wasn't good enough for you we are also doing patreon exclusive content so there will be two extra videos every single month that will include commentaries and maybe a bunch of other stuff i'm still gonna f try to find the footing on the patreon what you guys actually want to see that are subscribed to the patreon for the starters we're doing early access no ads extended versions of main channel videos and two exclusive videos on patreon only for five dollars a month i hope you guys like this i'm running it by myself I am putting a lot of work into this and I really wanted to do something special where I could do fan specific videos and stuff that you guys actually want to see and are requesting without being so tripped up in this idea of whether or not everybody is going to like it because I know if you subscribe to Patreon I'm going to be giving you guys what you want so if you guys want to see musicals every single week We'll do musicals every single week. If you guys want to see the extended version of this video, make sure you guys subscribe to my Patreon. There will be a link at the top of the description. It is only $5 a month for two extra videos and early access, no ads, and so much more to come because I want to make this something that is worth your dollar. So make sure you subscribe if you want to see more content from me. I love you so much. And without further ado, let's get back into the video. So the first question I would like to ask Nicole is what are your thoughts on the survivors of the Yellow Jackets team? Fuck Shauna. Um, that, <laughs> I had to whoa, 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 whoa. No. Actually, I was like not expecting you to say I that. Know, I, I was know. actually never expecting you to say that. I thought you were a Shauna, Shauna like champion. As like a big brown eyed baby girl, like like Shauna, you would think that I would be like team Shauna and like that one TikTok audio that's like, I love her, she's gorgeous, she's beautiful. What about the murders? What murder? Like that's how I feel about, well, like that's what people expect me to feel about Shauna. Honestly, ever since the first introductory scene of adult Shauna,
Madonna literally touching herself to her daughter's teenage boyfriend, I was like, oh, you're on my shit list. You cannot come back from that. You cannot come back from touching yourself to a teenage boy. Sorry, there's just no coming back from that. I get it. I understand all you shot of lovers and I get like, you know, you love the trope of her and Jackie. I love like, you're like, oh, well, she's, I support women's rights and wrongs. That is not a wrong I support. So she is on my shit list. Um, and I will not support Shauna through and through. Shauna hater. I thought she was a really hard character to like through the show, especially when I, again, saw a lot of people liking her. I was like, why do people like her so much? And I was like, I thought people were just as like associating her wrongs like for a long time with just her cheating on her husband and having an affair. And I was like, okay. And then I start seeing what teen Shauna does. And then I see how it's reflecting on adult Shauna. I'm like, wait a second. She's kind of crazy. She never grew up. She's kind of insane. No, actually, like she just never grew up. Like she is still, I mean, the actress did a great job. What's her name? Melanie Linsky. Mm -hmm. Like me pretending like I don't know her name. And I'm like, <laughs> what's her name? Melanie Linsky. Uh, I think it starts with an M. <laughs> as soon as I, you know, when you see the comparison of the two, like they both did an amazing job at like portraying the most annoying character ever and the most um, insufferable character ever. And like, she just can't fucking win because um, she she doesn't want to win. She got not only herself in so much trouble, everyone else around her in so much trouble. Um, there are people dead because of her. She she is the cause for so many deaths. I, I can't get past it. Um, I just think that she is just insufferable. That's the best way to describe it. And I don't I don't support it. But uh, Melanie Linsky is like really good at playing insufferable characters. Like she played the creepy aunt from Perks Being Wallflower. So. So this is a pattern. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this is a pattern of behaviors. This is a pattern. And I'm, I don't think I support it. I get it though, like to an extent. If you like Shauna, you can be honest. You can, t you can, you can be truthful if you, if you're a Shauna supporter. We'll get to it when we get to the teen timeline, but like the Jackie Shauna like thing, I can't be on Shauna's side. I don't understand that entire scene and we'll watch it. We'll watch the whole conversation that they have. Sorry, sorry that she's the, literally the team captain and you're on the fucking bleachers. Sorry, sorry, you didn't have to go fucking have sex with her boyfriend and have his baby. And have his mother freaking baby and be like, tell me you love me. I know, I know. And he's, and he's like, he's like, uh, <laughs> uh, back up a bit, <laughs> back up a bit. I can't watch any of the scenes with his, uh, like, like adult Jeff, like Shauna's husband. I mean, I, I will watch the scenes because like I have to, but like he looks exactly like my boyfriend's father. And so seeing him like in that state, I'm like, I cannot watch this. Like this is actually X-rated. I cannot see this right now. When he like bends her over I, and like, I, <laughs> he gives it to her for real. Like the, like, I don't, I can't really tell if they love each other or are they hate either. each other throughout the entire thing. I'm like, um, he like does this whole confession where he's like, I did it. Like I, I killed that random man that I don't even remember. Adam. Yeah. I killed Adam. And then freaking Frodo kills him, <laughs> kills the cop or knocks him out. And he's like, I got him. He's like, you really are so dedicated. I'm like, what is going on with this couple? Like, and their child, their child, their poor child that they wrapped into it. I'm sick. I'm actually so sick. I think I wouldn't be surprised if Shauna turns on her own daughter. Like, I think that's like a very common um, opinion in like the Yellow Jackets community that she's going to like throw her own daughter under the bus because... Because she's fucking crazy. Because I was literally like, at first I was like, damn, like, why the fuck does her daughter hate her so much? And then I was like, and then I was like, wait a second. Yeah, I'd hate my mom too. I'd hate my mom too if she was touching herself on my bed in my Ew. bedroom to my boyfriend. I would also hate my mother. <laughs> I, I would hate my mother if she did that. That's actually so disturbing. And it just sucks that every single scene they show of like Jeff and Shauna, they're like, why do you hate us? And I'm like, no, Leah. No shit. Why would she hate you? Like, you guys are so weird. Like, she was, I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm sorry, Callie. You were destined for weird parents i would rebel if i were her too i i i would go well i almost said i would go you know hook up with a cop but i wouldn't i would not hook up with a cop 
This is me stating into the camera. I would never hook up with a cop, but I too would hook up a cop with a cop to rebel against my parents if my parents suck that bad. Well, if my parents were literally like criminals, yeah. I'd be like, I'm going to fuck a cop and turn you in, <laughs> yeah. you mother fuckers. And like, they are like, they're just such an odd couple. And every single time they show up, I'm like, I think you guys are trying to make me like you and I just can't. Yeah. And like, you know, work. Like he did, you know, try to be nice to her. Awesome. Whatever. But like the other stories, I believe, of the adults, there's some interesting stuff happening there too. Mm -hmm. Specifically, okay, a lot of couples in the adult timelines that have very tumultuous relationships. Um, Thaisa and her wife yeah. have another very weird relationship. Oh, yeah. That is also, I, I don't even know how to compute it because it's like, I don't know. Let me know your thoughts. Let me let me hear your thoughts on Thaisa and her <sighs> wife. Thaisa's whole timeline, like with in general, like with her mental health is like hard because it's very scary and you can't tell like how much of it is paranormal issues versus how much of it is mental health issues her and van i don't know what the fuck is happening there like with all of that right and and let alone like i don't even know sorry to like go too forward but like i would not be surprised if in season three like van suddenly does not have cancer anymore and now van and thaisa are going to be end game thaisa and and her her wife in the beginning they also seem like they hate each other i feel like every couple in this seems like they hate each other um yeah we start at hatred like there is not a single point in like the first episode where i'm like yeah they like each other it's like literally Thaisa's wife is like I don't want you anywhere near my child Thaisa though like she is like probably the scariest adult like even though Misty like flat out just like kills people Thaisa is is a scary ass bitch like all the the times that she's like staring at herself in the mirror and her face is like contorting and stuff and like I, I tried looking into like what does Thaisa technically have because she clearly does suffer from really bad nightmares, but is it specifically PTSD? I heard some, you know, things online about people thinking that maybe she technically has um, BPD. Um, I, I like can't figure, I mean, I'm, I'm sure that we'll figure that out eventually, but it's just so interesting how they seem to portray it. Like she's like literally possessed. Her fucking eating dirt, <laughs> like that, is crazy like every single dirt eating moment that we have with Thaisa but honestly as a girl who used to eat ice as like a kid like I had that thing pika or pika or whatever like where I was like low in iron and so I would like crave ice oh my god I wasn't a, a dirt girl but I was an ice girl my best friend I'm gonna out her right now she was um a baby wipes girl she would suck on baby wipes and and um lick the roll-on deodorants um, Thaisa is our dirt eating queen. And I really love the Pika Pika representation for that. So, and honestly, there's nothing, I don't see how harmful eating dirt is. <laughs> Seems, and like an easy to digest, undigestible substance. In my opinion. No, that's true. Honestly, her eating dirt is the least scary thing about her. I know. Like what she does to the dog is like... That is, she's so batshit crazy, but it's like, I, cause she suffers from it in the teen timeline as well. Yeah. She suffers from like sleepwalking and like almost like these monsters and like, it almost seems when she's like a teenager, she kind of is more not aware of it, but it's almost like more of a presence that they understand how to combat. Like her and Van together can kind of, if that makes any sense, like they seem more like controlled about the situation whereas when she's an adult like it's like whatever you want right senator <laughs> <laughs> i do think like in in my personal opinion i do think that the timeline of her as like a teenager isn't my favorite one out of all of them because she's not doing anything that crazy she's just like l going to the symbol and stuff but her as an adult is absolutely fucking scary and you know scarier than misty i mean misty like there's nothing I mean, I'll get into my thoughts about Misty later, but there is nothing that you can do to pry my cold dead hands away from Misty. Yeah, Thaisa needs help. It's almost like I think her storyline is, I think between her and Natalie, I think 
Thaisa's might be the saddest because she's so, yeah. like, out of control when it comes to it. Like, I find Natalie's storyline to be very sad, but I find Thaisa's to be, I think, more sad because it's so unpredictable. Mm-hmm. Um and like so lost in a limbo that I feel really bad for a character. But I do agree that when she kind of blends into the background in terms of the teen years, I do not find myself gravitating to her unless, you know, obviously it's a scene with Van kind of sparks my interest and whatever, because together they have a little bit more of like a, a shining storyline. But that's also due to there being so many girls in the teen timeline. Like you're much more scattered and you don't know which ones are really going to make it for a long period of time. So you're kind of counting their days. Like when Van got fucking like mauled, I was like, oh my God, this is it. She escaped death twice. Someone get her. (laughs) I know. (laughs) Someone get her. Like someone get her. Why didn't she get picked? I know the fact that she almost got killed like first of all in the fire of the plane and then jackie was like we gotta go like we gotta leave her almost died there then almost died from the wolves and then then is dying from cancer like that is the it's not funny to die from cancer but that is the funniest thing ever that you didn't die in the wilderness from like these like extremely traumatic events but it is this like slow consuming thing i'm like that would happen to van of course, because she just... Uh, but knowing her, she's going to escape death again. She's going to live the longest out of all of them. She's like Final Destination. Like, she keeps escaping and they're like, oh, like, we have to get Van again. Like, come on. Like, we got to get her ass. And they're like, she's like, no, no, no. I found the code. I found it. Next is... Uh, let's talk about Natalie. I think Natalie is like an important character to talk about because we see her as a teen and we see her as an adult and they kind of like match, you know, she's she's like, I'm rough around the edges. I'm a I'm bad kid. I got I had blonde hair when I was a kid. I look like Grimes, whatever. She's literally Grimes <laughs> twin. I felt like I was going crazy when I saw her. I was like, that's Grimes. That's literally Claire Boucher or whatever her name is. Like me, me pretending I don't know these people names, like, like their legal government names. Then she's kind of revealed as like kind of cold and mean, but then we see this softer side of her open up when is she's talks about Travis um, and they're revealed to kind of have a romantic relationship when they were younger. And we find out in season one that Travis has passed passed away and it's deemed as I think a suicide yeah yep it's deemed as a suicide and she's like um bitch that's not a suicide you look at the autopsy reports and you're like who the fuck deemed this as a suicide no literally who who would do that but Natalie has a very interesting storyline and her storylines kind of coincide with um Misty Mm -hmm. uh, and they kind of intertwine but I want to know your thoughts on Natalie because I think she is kind of one of those fan favorite characters and Mm -hmm. you did not like Shauna so no I I love Natalie I love teen Natalie I love adult Natalie like she's probably my favorite character I also just like really love the actresses that play both I love Natalie I feel so much for her and I first of all she did not deserve the ending that she got and I still have hope that something is going to happen, that she's not going to have the ending that she has, because what do you learn in television and movies? If you didn't see a body, then it's not death. It's not death yet. Adult Natalie, I feel very, very sorry for her because you can clearly tell that she wants to be getting better and she's clearly trying to make strides in being better. Like, literally the first scene of her is in rehab and... Thaisa paid for that. Thaisa paid for her her rehab um, a few times. And like, it's just very, very special how like they still have a bond after all these years and everything. But it is clear that where Natalie came from, it's she didn't have the upbringing that the rest of the girls had. Like, for example, like Lottie came from a lot of money and like Lottie had all these resources and everything, even though her parents like really fucked her over. But Natalie didn't have that. She didn't have supportive parents. She didn't have a good mom. She didn't have a good dad. And she's like doing the best with what she has. And she just unfortunately was dealt the cards that she was dealt with, even though she's like the fucking reason that any of the girls are still alive. I just think that they really fucked her over with the ending that she got. And I don't, I really hope that it was necessary for it to happen. I hope it does mean something when she dies. Cause you know, obviously Misty injects her with something that was meant for the like random person that was like, it was from Lottie's cult or something. I, yes. I honestly forgot. It was like some random lady. It was like, I trusted you. Yeah. She needs to die. Um, and she sacrifices herself for her. But if that 
doesn't have a purpose for her dying then, then they should have just killed her when she wanted to kill herself. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's true. Because not much does happen between that point. She gets kidnapped. She's literally about to kill herself. And Lottie's cult comes in and snatches her. Yeah. And takes her to Lottie's commune or whatever. And they... Lottie's like, everybody needs to come back. Like, God, like, we need to come back together. And they do this whole thing about the, like, sacrifice to the woods. And if this motherfucker Woods keeps coming back to them and Natalie passed, I'm going to be like, what the fuck was it for then? Like, Did you hear the theory about Natalie having a daughter? I did not. I have not read any theories. I have been, like away from theories because I wanted to hear them from you directly. So one of the theories is that the woman at the that's in the commune, what the fuck is her name? The girl who the, the one who eats the fish or, or who has the goldfish that like they drive around and Natalie eats the goldfish for her. Like the young girl, like she's the one that like rescued her and then she stabs her in the face, like with the fork. I know what you're talking about. I have literally no idea what her name is. There is a theory that she may be Natalie's daughter because if the timeline works well, like if she's probably roughly around like 25, maybe she had this special connection with, with Natalie and that maybe that is why they have this special connection because they are blood related. But like people think that that is Travis and Natalie's baby. And like maybe that is part of the timeline for season three, that how difficult that is that Nat got to have, you know, a pregnancy that actually like fulfilled and had a healthy baby while Shauna couldn't. That's a theory that that's going to happen in season three, that Natalie is going to be pregnant. I don't know. I'm actually gagged because that would be crazy if both of the parents died and there's like this vessel of them because honestly i know travis isn't part of like the adult timeline for real but i did like travis and i felt bad for him yeah honestly okay like i'm not like a man lover or anything like no that. i don't like men like that but like you know like shout out to the men that were there with the teens like shout out shout out um you know followers didn't really do much <laughs> no no absolutely like i think that's the best part of this show is that they did not make them the most important part of the show like we barely ever see ben and uh, like coach ben and and travis interacting with each other i mean we see travis and javi interacting with each other because they're brothers but i i would like to say that the show passes the bechdel test because oh, for, sure. for sure i would love to say that i would hope it does i know and i and i appreciate that a lot about it like the men in there they did not exist solely for the purpose of like we're gonna like date these men and this is what's gonna happen i mean it did in a certain sense because misty was like you know obsessed with coach ben and nat and and travis were together but that was not the whole basis of the entire show yeah travis i i do i have a feeling that because that girl that was in all those scenes she did seem to have much more of an important role or part of it than she seemed like a main character towards season two and like i mean she was there at the death of natalie i just don't think that they would put her in there like that for absolutely no reason. I feel like she's going to have some sort of part to play in season three. And like, that's why her and Natalie came together at the, at the commune. Um, and I also would not be immune. To, I, I'm not one of those people who says that I would, I'm like immune to a cult and that I would never join a cult. Shout out to Lottie. Like, honestly, shout out like, Lottie was this, uh, Lottie adult timeline was introduced, I think maybe like season two, two am i correct she comes in season two she's a survivor and of course that lady that lady started a cult she did she started a cult and all the survivors come back because they're having like weird experiences um and they're you know they got sent the symbol and stuff like that and she's like guys <laughs> of course lottie says it. she's like one of us has to be sacrificed to the woods. I was so pissed off at her for that because I'm just like, get help, girl, get help. Like maybe, hey, what if we tried this, help? Like, what if we tried that? What if we tried that instead of doing any of these other shenanigans? I completely understand, Lottie is sick. Like Lottie is unwell. Lottie runs a cult every single morning when I make my little protein shake and I add maca powder into it. I just think about that scene where she like yells at someone for putting maca powder into her smoothie. She's like, I want energy, not libido. I And so I I think about maca powder every single day and I think about Lottie every single day when I'm drinking my little maca powder. But 
she pissed me off a lot because we wouldn't be in this mess. We wouldn't be in this mess if it wasn't for her. Um, and the fact that she was so successful with run, I mean, you, you knew that she would be successful. Like when you look at any cult leaders, like you're like, oh, that makes sense. Like that makes sense. Like why, why it all worked out. Like why people followed them and listen like that. I understand now. That's how I feel about Lottie, unfortunately, is that like, oh yeah, that makes sense. That makes like, that probably would have worked on me too. Like if I was in the wilderness and I needed some hope, I would have turned to Lottie and been like, that's my God. And if I was an adult and like she had this beautiful commune and she's like, you get to play with goats and we have like purple sweatsuits and no phones. I'd be like, all right, Lottie, I'll give you all the money that's in my bank account. It's like, we can just share the money. Do you believe that she is supernatural or do you believe that she's just sick? In my opinion, that's my opinion. I think that Lottie, there, I don't think there's any supernatural elements to the show at all. I don't think so. I think, I don't think so. I think it is literally all made to make you believe that it is supernatural, but in the actual sense, it's just like, there is a reason behind everything. And, and I can understand why a lot of people disagree with that because that's why a lot of people didn't like season two was people were like, it got way, yeah. So people were like, it got way too supernatural. But like in my head, that makes perfect sense because it's like you are observing it from the perspective of them of how they feel. Like they feel like they're going crazy. Like there has to be another element to all of this. I just don't think that it has anything to do with that. I think it all has to do with trauma and how much their brains have like literally changed and like group think and group mentality and like cult mentality as well. Like I, I truly do think that that's what's happening. I'm not going to lie. I will be low key kind of disappointed if, you know, the seasons go on and we find out that it's not the case, like that it's like literally, you know, supernatural and stuff. But I really, I don't think that Lottie has powers. I think that everything is kind of a coincidence like even when the the photo or the 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 clip of her when she's a kid and she's like in the car with her parents and she like screams before there's a car accident i think like all of these things have put into her head slowly that she is magical and mystical because like i was there too <laughs> i too i too i too I, I too saw symbols like the, the way that she kept seeing that symbol everywhere on all the trees. And she's like, oh, it's a sign. That's me with the fucking number 11. Like so much so that I was like, I need the number 11 tattooed on me because it's a sign. Like it's such a fucking sign. And then I got diagnosed with OCD and then I'm like, oh shit. So now I'm not allowed to view anything as signs. I'm like, nothing is a sign. So maybe that's where I'm like coming from this all. I'm like trying to come up with this like in a rational Wait, why do you think it's supernatural? I don't believe it's supernatural. I kind of am under the same notion where I think it's kind of like almost like a coping mechanism, um, like a trauma response. Like I don't know how we survived. The only way we could have survived is like through a supernatural presence. But I think we'll finally see. I hope there's like a big reveal, like obviously not within like the next season, but maybe like on a good season five or something that like, someone is like fucking with them or something like that because I don't believe if Natalie is truly dead I don't believe their experiences will stop I don't think that sacri sacrifice to the woods is going to help them in any way like I think they're still gonna keep experiencing stuff I think bad stuff is still gonna keep happening to them I think they're still gonna be drawn to each other like and I almost think this is just a theory I came up with my own. I feel like it's gonna be like, they're all gonna like kill each other off until there's one person and then you're like, I did it. And Honestly, like, I would, yeah, that kind of also makes sense. Like that is- And it's like, and nothing happened. It's like, I did it. Like we have sacrificed ourselves to the antler queen and like nothing happened. I wouldn't be surprised if it's Lottie. If Lottie is like the last woman standing, I would not be surprised because like she seems to kind of like work in mysterious ways. Low key, I wish that adult her got killed at the end so that like, but obviously then we wouldn't have a, an adult timeline for the rest because like there's no one else influencing them. But I think the same thing's gonna happen where, I mean like Van is still heavily influenced by Lottie, like as she was as a teen, as she is like as an adult, she's like very heavily influenced. And like, that's why she didn't call um, like, mental health professionals like she like canceled the call that they were supposed to make um to come get lottie during that whole intervention scene and everything and teenage her and adult her pisses me off real bad and i want to shake her really hard 
But at the same time, I think she has like kind of a lot of their saving graces in, in some way. But like, I think at the end of the day, she's just like a cult leader. Like, I think she is just like the Charles Manson of the group. I definitely agree because... How the fuck you have all these sacrifices, random, random picks of sacrifices, and you never picked? I know. I know. Like, no, truly. How come the only time someone, like, how come the only time you got hurt is when someone beat you the fuck up? Like, everybody else got hurt from, like, outside forces, so you can kind of agree, like, Van got attacked and, like, almost died in the plane, and then, like, Thaisa suffers from the nightmares and, like, all this kind of stuff. And I'm like, Lottie, you only got beat up by Shauna. Like, that's just Shauna, and we already know her as crazy so like what's your excuse if they would have showed her having like these episodes where she fully like believes that she is like has these powers and that she is you know supernatural in a sense or has this special gift if they would have showed that while she is on her medication when she is a teenager like in high school then i'd be like oh Maybe, like maybe there is some element, but I mean, they intentionally show in the beginning, you know, her maid giving her her medication like in the house in the very beginning, like when she's a teenager and her like losing her medication and her having to like ration it and how it like slowly all goes downhill. So I do think, so, but then there's like weird things that you can't explain. Like for example, like when they're in the attic and they're like doing the seance when they're teenagers and Lottie starts speaking French. And they're like, where the fuck does she know French from? And it's like, oh my God, it would make sense that like in Ontario, Canada, like where they're stuck, like this hunting man who's in the cabin, this cabin guy who's dead, the ghost of him, his French side is coming out through her. Like it makes sense that that would happen. And there are some things that you just can't like explain per se. But I don't want to say that she's like a master manipulator because I gen genuinely do think that she does believe in a lot of what is happening but i think there is a part of her that also knows that she is taking advantage of people like for example like you know adult her taking everyone's money and running a literal cult organization so no i definitely think that there's going to be something revealed about her later i don't think she's going to be and i don't believe this about any of the girls i don't think that they're going to be re like revealed later on like in the adult timeline as necessarily a good or evil force yeah i don't think any of the girls themselves will be revealed as this like all-time evil person and i think that's like kind of like the nuance of what they survived i think they're all going to be doing bad and good things for each other. Yeah. And I think that's going to be like kind of a hard thing to like grasp in the later seasons because they're only doing worse things as like they get closer to each other. But I don't think any of them will be revealed as that's like kind of my hot take is that I don't think any of them will be revealed as like truly evil. Um, I agree. I agree. With but you um, someone could say that Misty is evil. And I don't some could give say, a rat's ass. <laughs> some, some could say, some could say, I mean, I didn't say it. What's that thing, like that chart where it's like in the center, it's like neutral and like you have like the chaotic good, the chaotic neutral, the chaotic evil. Misty is the, is there a good evil? Is that one that is possible? Is good evil possible on, on that spectrum of, of the of the? Th <laughs> I'm I'm like doing the same thing like the Punnett square. I'm like, can you be that? Um, um, cause I think it's like good and evil on one axis. Fuck, I think she's and then chaotic, chaotic neutral and good. Wait, wait, cause I'm only thinking of four. But I think it's three and three. Oh, lawful. That's the other word. Oh, the longest word. So I think that Misty would be lawful evil. I think. I think so. Interesting. I think she, well, she is pretty chaotic too. But I think, I think she has good intentions with everything. Well, I don't know. Her as a teenager, she wasn't really lawful evil. Like her breaking like the, the black box, like the literal tracker for the plane. Not really lawful at all. Not really lawful at all. It might be chaotic evil. It might be it might be neutral evil because maybe she has a little bit of both. I don't know. True neutral. Who do you think is true neutral out of all of them? I was going to say Van just because she's like, yeah, girl, what the hell are you doing? <laughs> like you don't you don't do nothing. I think Natalie is chaotic good. I don't think yes. I don't think that she actually has ill intent on anybody. Put Shauna in jail. Yeah, Shauna Shauna goes to jail. So Shauna I don't Shauna might be 
damn, she's either, well, I don't think she's lawful evil. She, she might be chaotic evil. All right. Final answer. Shauna's chaotic evil. <laughs> Sorry. Bless you. Uh, Misty is neutral evil. Thank you. Um, and Thaisa, I would say, is chaotic neutral. Yes. Huh? Has she done it? No, no, she killed a dog. Not in her right mind, though. That's true. That's true. You're right. You're right. It's like the people that are... I literally just watched a podcast clip of Glenn Powell saying this, so I don't know if he's the most, like, resourceful, like, source, but he was talking about how there's, like, certain lawyers that represent clients who commit crimes on Ambien, who do illegal acts on Ambien to basically, like set them to like a lower sentence because Ambien can be like a, basically no way a way out <gasps> I guess so like maybe like guys like maybe Thais is on Ambien or something like maybe like we can get her out like free my girl Thaisa like she didn't do anything wrong free Thaisa free Thaisa right <gasps> wait oh my god I did not know that but actually that does make sense because I had a friend whose dad well he didn't do anything illegal as far as I know I mean maybe he did I don't know maybe he did but like on Ambien like she would be like yeah we had to like take my dad in every single night because he would stand by the pool every single night like on Ambien like ready to take a dip but like he had no idea that he's like ready to go take a dip um and so it's very scary and also like if you read um my year of rest and relaxation like what does she do on all of her sleeping pills like you know online shop and and whatever else i i have never been on ambien i've been on other sleep oh you know what i did do something maybe a little bit e no it's 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 neutral e no it's not evil it's not evil I'm like trying to rationalize my own things. I wasn't on a sleep medication, but sometimes in the morning when I wake up, like I'm in such a deep, deep confusion after a while. I bought um, fake scalper Sabrina Carpenter tickets for the upcoming tour. And um, so that's my ambient story. And I need to get a fucking lawyer so I can get my money back. I need to get an ambient lawyer. <laughs> no, you literally need an ambient lawyer. And like, honestly, props for you that you can say that you were on sleep meds because I bought scammer tickets for Olivia Rodrigo and I was not on any medication. I was not on any sleeping medication. Trin, I was also not on any sleeping medication. I was just sleepy. Like that was it. <laughs> oh, <laughs> you're like, I wasn't actually like on any medication. I was just like sleepy AF. I just, I just felt like I was on something because I was so sleepy. Nobody give a fuck about Adam. No, I don't care. Oh, on, I. <laughs> he died. <laughs> It, it might just be because I'm watching Orange is the New Black right now and I can't shut up about it. Like all my friends are making fun of me recently for being like, are you watching Orange is the New Black because of how many times you keep bringing it up? Like I have, have you watched it? I have never watched it. What? Oh my God. I watched it like as a kid, like as it was coming out, like I was a big, big Orange is the New Black fan. And so I'm like rewatching it all now and finishing this, the actual show because I never finished all the seasons. But there's just so many things that are overlapping, like, within it. Yes. Oh, my God. So many. I mentioned it in my video, like, the things that overlap. Um, but, like, one of the things is, like, cutting up his body. Like, the way that they did it. I was like, oh, my God. They did this on Orange is the New Black. Like, when they were cutting up Adam's body the way that they did. Now that it's been so long since I've even watched it, so I'm like, I'm literally thinking, I'm like, what the heck did Adam do? <laughs> like, I was like, what the heck did Adam do? What did he do? Other than be kind of cute. Yeah, it was, like, free free adam because like but why was he lying why was he out there lying so much about himself like about where he went to, like he is a sketchy little guy but what's his face the guy who plays that man you know the guy M M misty's i keep wanting to call her mitzi because of the girl from tiktok i always do that mitzi versus misty literally until i actually started like saying the character's name out loud i literally every single time i was like fuck i'm texting nicole about this character i don't fucking like i keep mixing up her fucking name and i'm like is it misty or miss miss misty or misty or mitzi or what is it and like and for a while i thought it was missy i was like she looks like a missy like i that was a very hard journey for me. My cat growing up, his name was Missy. And I didn't find out until I was like, I don't know, eight, that he was actually, that, that he wasn't a girl. So I like went his whole life calling Missy she. Um, and yeah, that's his story. I'm just here to say, say it.
just to tell the story. And he probably liked it, so it's fine. He did. Like, like, queen. <laughs> oh, the only other adult, you're right, is, um... Elijah Wood, um, Frodo, yeah, exactly. Elijah Wood exactly. is in this and he is like Misty's like boo, but like not even her boo. Like they like know each other. Like he helps her out. Um, I'm kind of interested to see where his storyline will go because I don't, for me, when I watched it, like I didn't see. I'm like, why the fuck is he here? I'm scared he might become true evil. I'm worried that he might down the line become true evil. Like that that down the line, like it's something weird that he like has an obsession with the yellow jackets. Cause like, you know how, how they were talking about, there's some groups that are like super obsessed. Like, why is he so obsessed in Adam's case? Like, I just have a bad feeling that maybe he, he is a little bit fucked up and a little evil. Like what if the reveal at the end is that like, there's no supernatural forces against the girls, but it's just... It's Elijah Woods. Or, like, it's just these, like, really obsessed fan groups that are so obsessed with the theories that they're supernatural that they're, like, making these things happen. Yeah. No, I wouldn't be surprised with that either. That's a good theory. Elijah Wood, what the fuck are you doing? Because, like, he's always there. Yeah. And at some points, I'm like... Why the fuck are you here? How the fuck did you? And even Misty's like, why the fuck are you here? So I'm like, what's his role going to be? Because if he survives everyone, I'm going to be pissed. That scene of them, like when they're in their own separate hotel rooms and they're each like doing their nighttime routine and, and it's like both side by side, like where they're so in sync with their own routines. I thought that was the cutest thing in the world. I love that scene so much. I also love like, I think during that that scene, that sequence, the song um, Angst in My Pants plays. Um, one of the best songs ever. It's very good. Side note completely. Soundtrack eats. That's what I wrote. I put that in my notes. I was like, soundtrack eats. Soundtrack's so good. Like literally all my liked songs during the period of time that I was watching Yellow Jackets, it's all just songs from the soundtrack. It's so good. I was literally like, even the theme song, like it almost seems like this like yeah mystery, like uh, like retro, like game show. Almost. I don't know. It's so good. I, that's like one theme song that I don't skip. Like I find it so like charming and I love how like spooky and creepy it is. Have you seen the movie? Um, I saw the TV glow. No, but I want to. I saw it in theaters and like basically there's a TV show within the movie called The Pink Opaque and it's like the same vibe vibes of um kind of like the intro and everything and just just the overall vibes of everything it's like that's what this is uh, it, it kind of it gives that um but yeah i i love anything set in the 80s so much like that is my favorite timeline of anything um like movie wise and, and music wise so anytime a show is set even if it's made now but it's set in the 80s i'm like oh i will eat this shit up like i will absolutely eat it the fuck up yellow jackets is a really cool adaptation of that because it's like no one really gets let's say period piece almost survivor shows anymore like if you yeah. get a period piece it's like in that period where like you can see it but it's interesting to see them in a different decade but in the woods because like what was what was happening in the woods <laughs> like all that time ago <laughs> i agree i feel like it's probably really easy for them to pull off the period piece element of it because it is in the woods because they don't have to like keep uh, 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 like obviously the the intro episode when you know they're like in a school setting and they're in mm -hmm. an outdoor setting and so like they have to make it like historically accurate and everything but like i find they probably did it so easily like inside of the woods because all that they really had to work on was the outfit um and the hair to like a certain extent but even then like not as much i don't know i just i think that they killed it and even with the, like their song choices that they did like it was matching what they probably like would have listened to back then um uh, like i just love it it's so good i'll be honest guys i had a little bit of difficulty like making my opinions about the adults because you know i'm a teen I was about to say teen lover for a second. <laughs> I was like, that's like actually so Diabolical. horrible. That's like actually so dubious and horrible to say out loud. But I love like the young adult timelines and you know I love a good like teen story. But I was, so I was having a little bit of issues like, like zoning on the survivors. But I think that like 
their storyline is in my opinion i think it's a slow burn mm -hmm. i think it's more of a slow burn than what's happening in the woods and i find that i think later on in the seasons i think they're gonna like I think the teen timeline will go like this and yeah. the adult timeline will go like this in importance. Because right now I think the teen timeline is way more important than the adult timeline. Agreed. And I think that will like even out for a second and then the adult timeline will start taking over. I agree because uh, there are a lot of people who are like, oh, I wish that the adult timeline like didn't exist. I wish it was just the, the teen timeline. But I, I agree that I think it's going to like all make sense. Like, for example, like if that really is Natalie's like daughter, for example, or like, you know, um everything else that that has been happening like now that natalie's dead like what's gonna happen now what's gonna happen with shauna is shauna gonna go to jail like what's gonna happen with callie do you think that they're gonna eat someone in the adult timeline i feel like they have to just for fun do we do we think they're gonna eat someone and do we think that it's going to be callie <laughs> oh fuck damn i wouldn't be surprised i would not be surprised if that if like i think if they do eat someone it might be someone's offspring I do have to say that. They should have eaten Adam. But they should have eaten Travis because he was a part of the survivors. So like, I get it. I'm sorry, he should have been eaten. <laughs> no, yeah. I, I I, feel like just for fun, like just for shits and giggles, I think that they should. I think they should. Oh my God, I can't wait until it's revealed to the public, like in the adult timeline, that they had to eat people. Like, you know what I mean? Because they don't know. Nobody knows that like Jackie was eaten at all. Like nobody. I know, they're just like, they're like, we love Jackie. Yeah. Farewell to Jackie. And like, they're like, mm -hmm, she was good as fuck. That's, I, I can't wait until that shit comes out because it's gonna, like, it's gonna have to, like, that'll have to be part of the timeline, like public scrutiny for, you know, the evil shit that they did. Because right now they're like almost like praised yeah. for surviving. Yeah. And I think they're gonna reveal a lot. Like, I think more dubious things happened in the teen, ti teen timeline that's going to be revealed in the adult timeline. I think like, Misty's kills have to be revealed in the adult timeline. Like her kills in the teen timeline, they have to be revealed. Like they just cannot not be revealed. I know, I don't want her to go to jail though. She's so fun. Like someone has to reveal <laughs> that she chopped off Ben's leg. I know, and the and the reporter. Like damn, the police in that town don't do shit. Like they don't know anything about what's happening at all. Like they they don't keep up with anything. You would think like a like a New Jersey town that's like close to to New York City, you would think that they would like be doing maybe a decent job at least because it's probably like very populated. No. They are not. Misty also like she worked in like public health care. Like she was like working yeah. with people and like she just was fully taking advantage of so many people. Oh, absolutely. How is she getting, she has access to all this stuff and like no one's noticing it. I feel like- They're like, whatever. She was played by the perfect actress though. God, what is her name? Christina Ritchie. She was perfect for her. Like I, I, I don't think anyone can do like creepy the way that she does. And it's just insane like how, how like Sammy Hanratty, the teen version of Misty, like how much, first of all, they like look alike, but they act alike and their mannerisms are so similar. Um, yeah, she's my fucking favorite creep. Like, shout out to Christina and Sammy. Like, shout out to C Sammy. Like, we hope you're watching. Like, love you to pieces. Like, she is the it girl. Like, I love her. I, she is so batshit crazy in the teen timeline. And like, obviously, like, Christina Ritchie, like, legend. Like, she eats. She eats all the time. But the fact that, like, they are so in sync with like their like you said their mannerisms is mm -hmm. scrum dilemptious like and we can see how like misty's like craziness matures yeah like she still and is crazy but she like she keeps it a little bit more demure do you think that coach ben is gonna be alive i was literally Thinking about that, I was like, if anyone's going to expose anything about Misty, it has to be Ben. But is that motherfucker alive? I know. Like, where is he with his leg? Like, Because if he were to be alive, I would love to see Misty be, like, obsessed and in love with him. Like, in the adult timeline. Like, I would love to see her, like, pining after him. Um, he's a cutie. Coach Ben. But, like... Coach Ben. He... Uh, I... He would have some things to expose. He absolutely would. And so that's why I do think. I mean, he's probably he's probably not alive. There's, yeah, like, there's no way those girls let him, like... Were you going to say walk away? You were going to say walk away. You were going to say there's no way that Coach Ben could have walked away. Uh, 
Like, <laughs> like, I mean, there's just like, I think that he's next. Like, there's no way that they're going to not eat him. Mm-hmm. Like, they're, they ate Javi. They ate him. <laughs> I ate that bitch right the fuck up. I ate him right the fuck up. I literally, like, was thinking the same thing after the, the Bones and All movie. Like, literally, I cannot tell you how often I'm like, I ate it right the fuck up. I ate him right the fuck up. Like, they are going to eat him because, like, the way they treat the men is like, okay, like, period. Like, queens, like, love you. But, like, the way they let Javi die was crazy. I know. By the way, I was like, they were like... But Misty's so real for that because she was like, if you save him, they're going to kill your ass. I know. And then we would have had no more Natalie. And I like fucking love Natalie. And not not saying that Javi deserved to die. Like he was just a kid. He was just a little one. But there are photos of them like hanging out behind the scenes. Like now I do keep up with Yellow Jackets, like behind the scenes photos and like whatever the Reddit page, whatnot. But there are photos that like the actor who plays Javi has been like hanging out with some of the cast. So I wonder if they're going to have some like flashback scenes with Javi or anything or the ghost of Javi haunting them. Someone better haunt them. I know. Because like after all they did, like especially to Javi and Travis, like one of them better haunt them. Um, But Ben, I feel like something's going to happen with him. If he's not alive in the adult timeline, I feel like he's going to have a moment of like standing up to the girls and they're going to be like, yeah, what the fuck are you talking about? Like you don't get a say. I feel like after, especially like burning down the cabin, I don't know because the obvious answer is like, Oh yeah, that was probably coach Ben who burnt it down. Cause he's the last person that we saw outside of the window. I would not be surprised if it's like the fucking wilderness set the house on fire and it's not his fault at all, but he has to like face punishment for that. You know what I mean? Right. Like, and, like, why would he burn it down, like, not... Well, he was pissed at all of them for, for like, literally eating Javi. And he was like, fuck you guys. But, like, at the same time, that is the only shelter that you guys... Well, he found... I was literally about to say, I was like, you can't walk and you want to, no. like, burn down the one shelter you have in the dead of winter. He's going to live in that warm-ass tree for the rest of his life. Like, I think they're planning on picking off the boys and obviously, like, not Travis yet, but... Yeah. Well, Travis... Do you think they... Do you think one of the girls killed Travis? Like in the adult timeline? Yeah, because like who the fuck killed him? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know how, like, I wasn't it Lottie? Like, wasn't it kind of assumed that Lottie kind of convinced, pushed him into it? Or that, that Lottie was like responsible of it because she was the one that was like driving the crane? And she was, she was like, or she was responsible for it. And she was like, don't worry, like, I'll stop it. Because he, like, wanted to die for a few seconds. And then he, you know, like, the, the button broke, supposedly, according to her. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if she, like, intentionally killed him as a sacrifice. Because she needed something back from, like, the wilderness. And she thought that that was, like, making a sacrifice. But in her head, she's like, the button broke. Like, I wouldn't be surprised by that. But, um... Yeah, no, it fucking sucks for for Nat. Nat never got her justice with unless she unless she's alive. Me like being hopeful. Well, we again we just saw the black body bag. I know that's true. That's all we saw, but Missy's reaction is convincing. I know, I know, and like, oh, then well, Lottie is she gonna be in season three because she gets sent away to like a mental hospital? Are they gonna be separated? Are we gonna go back to all of them being separated in season three? Like at least in the adult timeline, are they gonna be like separated? Right. And will that reflect to the girls in the woods? Like maybe they in the girls, uh, the teen timeline, they have to separate like due to like not having like a big shelter to house them all. Like yeah, I'm shit out of luck. I don't know what to say. They did a fast ass turnaround for like the last season. Like when they filmed it versus like when it came out, it was a really, really, really fast turnaround. So I really hope that they do that for this season because I can't go much longer. And it's it's like, it is a fall show. It is a fall ass show. Like I need it ASAP. Yeah, and it's like, not like, you better come out with the like shows quick. You better come out with the seasons quicker because I'm not paying for fucking Showtime every month. Like I'm not watching anything else on there. I'm not watching a damn thing on Showtime Paramount. Like you better <laughs> like pump out something else if you want me to watch it. Like, are you kidding me? I'm seeing if there's anything else like people. Oh, Reddit says Yellow Jacket season three won't be premiering until 2025. 
fuck? Like, give it better be more episodes if they're gonna be like I know twenty twenty five. Like, I heard that they might get. I mean, I don't know if this is true at all, but like, I heard that it was rumored that they might get picked up by a different network. Honestly, I do think that Yellow Jackets would be way more successful if it was picked up by like Hulu or 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 Netflix because since it is a Showtime show, I just don't think that that's why it's not as big as as other shows because it deserves to be very big. No, I think that for the amount of success that it's gotten since it's such a restricted um like streaming add-on, I think that like if they were on HBO or like anything else, I think they would have like a much higher success rate just because like you kind of already have the proof in the pudding. Like they already have such a big fan base as I've heard from them <laughs> firsthand, the big fan base. Um I think that they would like have no problem being picked up by another like network but then will the quality change will the writing change will the storylines change it does say that there's going to be a bonus episode released before season three like to to hold us over so i mean there was rumors about that happening after season two about uh the a story about the guy in the cabin Ooh. yeah so i wonder i wonder if that may be what is happening before season three because that'd be really interesting and like Shout out to presidential candidate Kamala Harris for like watching Yellow Jackets. Like, I can know. you get us season three quicker? Like, it, can we work something out? I want to hear all of Kamala's thoughts on on season three. Like, I want like Kamala. If you're watching, leave a comment down below, <laughs> letting us know your thoughts, your theories, even like um, let us know if you can bump up the season three timeline. Like, I would love to know if that's something that. Maybe you could call them up. The same way that she has picked up like on Brat and everything and found success with that. I think she could do this exact same thing with Yellow Jackets. Like get everyone's vote for that. Um, just by being like, okay, so I am Thaisa. I am the senator. I actually do sleepwalk. I killed my dog. I would actually die. I would love to know like the way she like just talked about it so casually. I'm like, okay open up about like open up because this is a that was kind of a random show i for some reason thought that she was confusing it with yellowstone because mm -hmm. that seems like an adult show that like a lot of like adults watch i was like she must be mistaken and then she started naming off like stuff that happens and i was like kamala i i love that honestly i i i enjoy being part of one of Kamala's favorite shows like oh my god the same way that like Barack Obama to this day still does like playlists of the summer that's what we're gonna have from from Kamala Harris when she's president she's like Kamala's summer shows this is the show of the summer oh my god this is when they woke up and they're like oh my god it smells like Thanksgiving <laughs> and they wake up and they're like Ooh, it smells so good. Um, I'm kind of going to end this abruptly because if you want to see the rest of our thoughts on Yellow Jackets, you're going to have to go over to Nicole's channel and watch the video on hers. We're going to be talking about a lot more things on her channel about Yellow Jackets. So if there's something we miss in here, we're probably going to cover it there. So if you want to see the rest of it, go over to Nicole's channel. We are doing Chronically Online Girl Explains Yellow Jackets lore because we all know how much people love to shit on all the Chronically Online Girls that have anything to do with movies or TV shows because what lore? Just watch the TV show or the movie. No. And <laughs> we want to be able to talk about it more. That's the whole thing. Like literally I got into all of this with like commentary on music or I literally got into all of this like with commentary on like movies and TV shows and all of that because of Trin and watching her videos. So I'm not joking. I was literally like I want to be like Trin. I love Trin's content. I want to do what Trin does. And so anyway, that's what we're going to do on my channel. So if you guys want to go over there, it's just Nicole Raffi. Yay! I think that wraps it up. Yay. This is so fun.